Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. I'm Zyrene and today we'll be talking about 10 settings that can help you play better. Some of the settings here are more about giving you better awareness and streamlining processes, but others actually give you a mechanical advantage over other players without them. It's definitely easier for new players to learn these settings early on, but if you've been playing without them, it's time to stop hindering yourself and show that an old dog can learn new tricks. I do want you guys to know, however, that we've started a giveaway. We're giving away Riot points, coaching sessions, Pro Guides points, Pro Guides subscriptions, and more. To participate, just subscribe and join our Discord using the link in the description. Then you can check out the giveaway tab. We'll start things off with quick casting. Without quick casting, when you go to cast a spell, most of them have a range indicator that pops up after you press the hotkey. For skill shots, you left click in the direction you want to fire. While for targeted abilities you left click on, you must left click the target. With quick casting, the process is much faster, eliminating the left click portion of the spell cast. With just a single spell, the difference is insanely noticeable. But when you factor in all the clicking and comboing of spells that goes into a duel or team fight, you'll really feel the difference once you master quick casting. It's especially noticeable on champions that burst for a lot of damage in a quick combo, like LeBlanc or Annie or mages that spam a lot over time with super low cooldowns, like Ryze and Cassiopeia. And it's not just mages that benefit either. Whether you're trying to flash W as Maokai to make a game-winning catch, or Arcane Shift away as Ezreal, having quick cast can save you just enough time to decide whether you succeed or not. Here's a couple of tips about quick casting. When you hit escape to open the menu, you'll notice a box underneath with the option, replace quick cast with quick cast with indicator in the quick bind UI. Checking this makes it so that you get the range indicators from a normal cast as long as you hold down the hot key for a spell, but releasing the key still sends the spell out without clicking. However, I think this option still feels kinda clunky, so instead I recommend you go into your hotkeys, open the abilities in summoner spell section, and bind normal cast to something, that way you can swap away from quick casting in the appropriate situations. Like if you're waiting to hook someone over a wall, or shooting a long range ash arrow. Personally I use shift plus Q, W, E, and R for this. And while quick casting will overall make you a better player, there are a couple of spells in the game that some players say it actually makes worse. Specifically, those with vector targeting can often be hard to use, even for experienced players. Vector targeting is when you use a combination of location targeting and direction targeting to be cast, and applies to Victor's E, Talia's W, and Rumble's ultimate, and Fiddlestick's passive. You may want to toggle off quick casting on those abilities when playing those champions if you find it hard to master. Before we go any further, today's question of the day is, What's one secret tip you wish someone would have told you when you were new to League? I wish someone would have told me to use Quicksilver Sash and then flash out of knockups and displacements, like Malphite and Gragas Ultimate. Let us know your answer in the comments below. Next, we have Attack Move. Attack Moving makes it so that you move towards your cursor's location, but attack the enemy either nearest your cursor or your champion, which is controlled by another setting found in the game category of the menu. When using Attack Move, there are two options. The first is Player Attack Move and the second is player attack move click. With player attack move, using the assigned hotkey will change your cursor into a targeting reticle. Left clicking then will issue an attack move. Player attack move click cuts out the need to click. So it's almost like quick casting your attack move, making it smoother, and in my opinion, just better in every way. So what's so great about attack moving? Well, it has a lot of applications, but the most useful is when team fighting. Lower skilled players tend to either run from a threat or stand still and DPS it down. Players that master attack moving don't have to make that choice. They can do both, maximizing their survivability and damage output at the same time. Once you get good enough, you'll be contributing a lot more to fights and the damage charts will show it. But it's not just team fights. Even just during laning phase, using attack move is incredibly useful. For one, it helps you get more comfortable with using the hotkey, but it can even prevent an accidental death. Imagine you're farming minions as a squishy ADC. If you just barely miss a minion with your cursor and right click the ground instead, you'll find yourself walking forward. If you don't immediately realize your mistake and turn around, you're bound to take free damage. Make that same mistake in a full on team fight and it is insta-death. With attack move, it will never happen. Attack moving is also useful for going into bushes, whether you're chasing an enemy or just checking to see if there's one in there. I'm sure you've seen at least a clip or two on YouTube of someone embarrassingly getting juked back and forth as they chase an enemy between two bushes, unable to react but they click fast enough to target their enemy. Don't wind up in some montage. Learn to attack move as you chase. 
If you aren't sold yet, I have one more good application of this OP setting. Use it to move across the map. Whether you're walking to a fight a few screens away, or just walking through the jungle or river to catch farm, the ability to attack whatever is in the way can help you clear control wards you would otherwise walk over. Or in the case you run into an enemy champion, it may let you get in a few extra autos before you even realize what's going on. I'd just like to note here that practice tool is nice to actually set up and try out the settings we're recommending. But to actually start seeing results, you'll have to queue up and practice with them in real games. It can take hours and hours over days and weeks to master stuff like this. But trust me, it is super worth it. These first two settings are, in my opinion, the two most important settings for a player to use to bring out their full potential. But compared to other parts of gameplay, settings are something often overlooked. That's why we release content like this video to make sure you're in the know on what to run to play like a pro. If you enjoy stuff like this or just keeping up with the meta, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a video. Now let's talk about target champions only. Like the name says, this makes it so that you literally can't attack anything but champions. The most common use will be when trading in a minion wave. Nothing is quite as embarrassing as attacking a minion and then losing the fight by just a single auto. But an even more useful application is when turret diving. Sure, if using spells, it's easy to hit a champion hiding behind a turret. But if you're relying on auto attacks, it can be extremely easy to flop on a dive and end up being double killed as you pour your damage into the structure. I highly recommend going to your game settings and checking off treat target champions only as a toggle, so that you can enable the setting with a single press of the hotkey and then press the hotkey again when you're done fighting, rather than having to hold it down for the entire duration of the fight. Our last setting that's directly related to combat is to learn to use your S key to not attack. This isn't necessarily a new setting, but it's not a command most people make use of. This one is short and simple. Let's give a scenario. You have minions under the enemy turret, so you're hitting it. The enemy Nautilus hooks you with a hook, pulling you in, as you click to walk away, he roots you with an auto, and since you're no longer moving, your champion automatically attacks him since he's the closest target. Now you have tower aggro, and you take two shots, and you die. But that doesn't have to be the case. If you just press S when you're rooted, your champion will stop attacking, you won't get tower aggro, and you may buy yourself the chance to escape. Now let's talk about some settings that can raise your awareness a bit more, starting with your HUD. To really give you the most awareness and least distractions, you should do the following. Increase your map size to the maximum available size. This gives you the best possible chance of noticing enemy movement on the minimap. Minimap awareness is key to escaping ganks, and dying less guarantees that you have a better chance at winning games. Decrease your chat to a size that's as small as possible, but still allows you to read it. Even if chat isn't necessarily being toxic, having a big box on your screen that isn't always relevant to the game is an unnecessary distraction. Add flaming teammates and taunting enemies, and it's even more so. Keep it small, and just look at it when you need to communicate. Lastly, consider decreasing your overall HUD size. The smaller HUD means more field of view for the actual game itself. However, even with thousands and thousands of hours on the game, I still use the setting that shows mana costs on my spells, and I recommend that you do the same. This can save you the embarrassment of being 10 mana short of a full combo right as you flash in and die. So do keep your HUD at a large enough scale to see the mana costs of your spells. In addition to these HUD settings, you should make sure that the camera settings are comfortable for you as well. This includes learning to play with unlocked camera. Having a camera locked onto your champion 100% of the time hinders your ability to gather info, whether it's scrolling just a screen away or across the map. With champions that use global ultimates like Ash or Gangplank, it's pretty much impossible. I recommend that you use unlocked camera all the time and just have camera center bound to spacebar or any other button you can comfortably press as you need in team fights for solid camera control. As part of learning to play with an unlocked camera, you'll want to mess around with the sensitivity a bit. You won't be gathering any useful info if it takes you 10 seconds to scroll from bottom to mid, or if you zip across the map faster than your eyes can process. And our last camera tip is one of the most important things in this video. Learn to use your F keys to check on your teammates. If you didn't know already, the F1 through 5 keys are bound to your teammates, with you being defaulted to F1. Instead of clicking on the minimap and dragging the camera all around with your mouse, you can quickly cycle through your teammates with the F keys to do brief checkups. Just don't try to be like certain edgy players that do it so fast that they actually aren't gaining any relevant info. To take your awareness even further, you can go to the interface tab of the menu and scroll down to notifications. There, you have the following options. Screen flash on damage. Most of the time that you're playing League, you'll see when you're taking damage. 
but this is still a useful setting for those times that you're looking at a fight in mid lane as you're walking up from bottom. Screen flash on loss of control. When it comes to League's fast-paced fights, you need to be able to react to everything fast. Whether it's flashing from a speeding skill shot or using exhaust, timing matters a lot. Plenty of times I've seen an ADC be hit by a two second CC, but they QSS or cleanse one and a half seconds later, basically by the time the CC is off. This is because they didn't even realize that they were rooted or stunned in the first place. Enabling this setting gives you a visual aid. That way you know exactly when to cleanse yourself. Champion highlight on camera center. This setting makes it so you get a bright circle under your champion anytime that you center the camera, basically giving you a spotlight so you don't lose yourself even in the craziest of fights. And it's especially good when you're playing melee champions. Earlier, we already talked about minimizing the size of chat to make it less distracting. But here's a couple more things that you can do with chat to make it more in line with your goal of playing to win. The first of which is turning on timestamps. Timestamps make it so anytime you send a message or ping something, the game time you did so will pop up next to that line of text. So why does that matter? Say you force a flash from the enemy mid during a gank. You can immediately ping flash and get back to farming your jungle or ganking other lanes. Now a few minutes later, if you forget their flash timer, you can scroll up and check the timestamp to let you know if five minutes have passed or not. But hey, maybe you're the type that types out summoner timers anyways. This can still be useful for you. If you're fighting on the bottom side of the map, but your top laner gets ganked at the exact same time and dies, maybe he pings or types to indicate that the enemy used flash. Now you can actually have a rough estimate of how long it's going to be down without even witnessing it. Keeping track of summoner timers and abusing flashless enemies is huge, but many players fail to properly do so. If you want to learn how and when to force plays on enemies at a disadvantage, be sure to visit us at ProGuides.com. Our coaches can teach you how to exploit even the smallest of advantages to run with a lead once you get one. So we just got done talking about how important timestamps in chat are for helping you keep accurate timers. But what if chat is just constantly being spammed? Maybe an enemy is crying about their team or taunting someone on yours. Maybe your teammates are flaming, or maybe there's no toxicity, but the banter is just flooding the chat and you can't even see when that flash is back up again. Well, the first option is to just completely disable all chat. In my opinion, nothing that gets said in all chat is relevant to a game of League. If you're just playing ARAMs, normals, or flex with your friends, and you're just looking for fun, bantering and socializing can be fun. But if you're playing ranked and you really want to win, cutting out all chat can really help you to stay focused on your game. And if you're super easily tilted by a toxic team and you feel like it's just game after game of toxic people flaming, you can also even disable team chat. However, I think communication is pretty important in a team game like League. So this is a last resort. If you do end up having to resort to default muting everyone in the game, our next setting can help to at least communicate the basics. Smart pings are one of the best features that Riot has ever added to League. They convey the most basic ideas in League in a simple way with just the press of a hotkey. Make sure to bind them to the quick options, as just like with quick casting, this makes it so that the smart ping you want goes through with just the press of a hotkey without needing to click. Holding down the hotkey for any smart ping also pulls up a smart ping wheel. So for example, I have V for quick retreat, but I can hold down V and use my mouse to select danger or missing. However, one option is missing from this. The area is warded ping. Make sure that you bind this one individually. It's a lot quicker to ping try brush than to type out try brush is warded. That time can give your jungler time to 180 and not needlessly show the enemy where he's at. Video and audio settings are something people often overlook when it comes to playing competitive games. But gameplay clarity and smoother experience can actually really impact how well you can perform. Some players go as far to even mute all non-critical sounds, but I think that's a bit extreme. However, there are definitely some video settings you should check out to optimize your experience. These will be completely dependent on how good your computer is, so not everyone will need to apply these. Things like character and effect quality can be lowered to a minimum and you can disable shadows if you have to. Lower quality will give you maximum FPS, and high steady FPS can definitely help you play better. Before we go, there's one last video setting that doesn't affect your computer's performance, but it may help yours. Colorblind mode actually makes certain spell effects pop out more, so enabling that can help at least a tiny bit in some situations. And that wraps things up for our 10 settings that can help you play better. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you think we missed anything, be sure to let us know in the comments below. Remember to sub so you can stay up to date on our other great content like this. And one last thing, feel free to check out our Discord. The link for that is in the description box below. We'd love to have you as part of our community. I can't wait to see you guys back at the next video, but until then, good luck on the Rift, stay safe, and wash your hands. See you guys.